T minus 30 seconds and counting. The SRB hydraulic power units have been started. T minus 20 seconds. The sequencer on the orbiter now controlling the final seconds of the launch. 15 seconds. T minus 10. We're go for main engine start. 8, 7, 6. We have main engine start. 4, 3, 2, 1, and liftoff, liftoff of the Space Shuttle uh, Discovery on the 61M mission, and the vehicle has cleared the tower. Discovery rolling around to the correct azimuth, which is due east, to get an um, equatorial inclination of 28 and a half degrees for this flight. on 4,000 feet per second velocity. Downrange now 22 miles. Main engine is still holding in at 104% thrust each. Discovery Houston, performance nominal, two engine to car capability. Roger, performance normal, plunge in the car. Solid rocket booster separation, perfectly normal. Auxiliary power units still running at uh, slightly over 100% performance levels each. Fuel cells uh, each generating uh, in excess of seven kilowatts each. Velocity 5,400 feet per second, downrange 73 miles. Roger, uh, regarding loop, water loop two, we're thinking now it might be a degraded pump, and before we give you a go for orbit ops, we're going to come up to you with a little checkout procedure to uh, determine its flow capability. Okay. 25 minutes until um, acquisition through the tracking satellite. And um, AOS Hawaii in 17 minutes. At Hawaii, the um, crew of Discovery will run a check of the water coolant loop number two, which uh, 
Some of the system's controllers here believe it has a fault in it. Payload bay door opening has been delayed until after that water loop can be uh, checked out and verified. At uh, one hour and 59 seconds, one hour and one minute, this is Mission Control Houston. Discovery Houston with you at Hawaii for seven minutes. And Houston Discovery, Rachel out clear. Roger, Mike, and we'd like you to get onto the uh, water pump loop two procedure there as quick as you can. If you're watching it, uh, I'm going to go uh, manual decrease on loop two for 20 seconds. You ready? Roger, and confirm we got uh, loop two on and uh, loop one off. Got that now, and uh, we're in manual, ready to go decrease. Roger, Mike, we are watching. You've got to go. Go. Discovery Houston. Go ahead. Roger, Mike, you have a go for payload bay door ops, and uh, we'll like, we'd like to leave loop two running as is. Okay, we're going to open the payload bay doors. And Discovery, uh, in case that wasn't clear, you have a go for orbit ops. Okay, go for orbit ops. Houston Discovery, we're on page 3-3, three three, step 2 of the uh, IUS checklist. We're standing by for your go to transfer to internal power and proceed with the uh, pre-deployed checks. Okay, we copy that, uh, Jim. We can't proceed without data, and you're in fixed format. Uh, be advised also that uh, in the process of elevating, uh, we got up to about, looks like about 20 degrees elevation, and we've had uh, a stop in motion. And uh, when the process of working the, uh, the malfunction at this time, uh, and we'll go ahead and cycle uh, cycle the uh, drive in April and try to re-elevate it. But at this time, we're stuck at about 20 degrees. Ecom flight. Okay, Jim, we uh, copy that you're stuck at 20 degrees. It's time. The sand has just run out on an answer to your for primary power to the PCP. Tilt table's jammed. The only thing we can do is disengage the secondary actuator and engage the primary if you think we've got power. Our alternative is doing an EVA. What we're planning on doing, you have a go to restow the IUS for tonight. We would like for you to perform the uh, restow IUS umbilical attach procedures. We would like for you to delete steps two, three, five, and six. I'll repeat those. Delete steps two, three, five, and six. Perform step four using the IUS PI link. And on step eight, do not latch Perla number two. Over. And Houston Discovery, uh, we'd be curious what y'all are thinking here for tomorrow. We are planning a uh, contingency EVA for 18A tomorrow. And we're going to leave you here at Tedris. We're going to go LOS. We'll pick you up um, Guam at 551. Okay, I understand that. Uh, we'll get the restow in work and then get the pre breathe in work. That's affirmative. Crew has been instructed to restow the tracking data relay satellite inertial upper stage combination after an unsuccessful attempt to deploy that today. During the uh, pre deployment checkout, a number of problems were encountered, including the hardlined command link between the orbiter and the inertial upper stage. Uh, the backup radio frequency command link would be used. Additionally, the crew encountered a problem with being unable to elevate the tilt table beyond 20 degrees to its 45-degree deployment attitude and being unable to solve those problems today. The crew has been instructed to restow that uh, 
IUS Tedris combination for the day and to begin contingency EVA procedures which uh, must be done at this time if the option is to be retained for a possible spacewalk tomorrow to repair the tilt table or uh, any other procedures that must be done in the payload bay to uh, make possible the deployment of the tracking data relay satellite. Discovery Houston, good morning. game plan goes like this, we think. Uh, we have considered through the evening uh, options, both in the IFM world, uh, looking at jumpering power to the primary side of the PCP tilt table, which is directly with the breakout box. And we've also assessed EVA options, all aimed towards getting the tilt table up to a minimum safe deploy angle. Uh, all that deliberation on the PCP IFM and uh, many discussions with Sunnyvale concerning pin assignments and so forth have led us at this time to drop that from our consideration. We don't have a final go from Sunnyvale on that being viable and uh, on that option not introducing more hazards than it solves problems. So we feel at this point that uh, our only reasonable path towards getting a, an adequate tilt table angle is through the EVA. If you've taken a look at the manual after procedure, uh, you, you'll notice that basically that amounts to providing a manual override to the broken handle. And we think there are two possibilities there uh, which we would like your input on. One possibility involves uh, proceeding through about step four of that procedure where you remove the the now broken handle and its mounting elements to the uh, spring-loaded pin. And the option at that point in the game is to consider just clamping a vice grip to that spring-loaded uh, pin shaft and doing a two-hand job of holding the pin out of its detent with one hand while you manually raise the tilt table using the hand wheel with your other hand. We looked at that here in the control center overnight. It's only about a seven-pound spring force on that pin and uh, my impression was that you might very well be able to jam your hand on your right hand into a, an angle there on the manual after assembly and basically restrain the pin out of detent while you raise the table. Uh, should you decide at that point that doesn't look uh, acceptable to you or doesn't look uh, like a possible thing to do in the EVA work environment, then you can continue with the manual after ISM procedure as written and what you'll essentially do is completely remove the pin and its bushing and spring, then reinstall the bushing, providing a sleeve for the pip pin that's tethered on the manual after. And you'll use that pip pin rather than the, the currently installed pin to restrain the table once you've gotten it elevated to the desired angle. And of course, you'll have to tether that pin in place with some Velcro straps. And we'd also recommend you tether the hand wheel to a fixed position. So. Uh, which of those options to pursue will be your call based on uh, how you feel as you go through the manual after IFM procedure. Okay. Well, Bob. I'm going to move that in. Go ahead and pull the, uh, go ahead and pull the pin out. Okay. You're lined yeah. up. Just put the pin back in. Go. Right. Look, if you can't see it, let me know and I'll get it. Yeah, I'm working blind from over here, Gemma. All right, let me have Why don't you just go ahead and let me hold it. Right. I think work out better. That looks like it's got it about there. Yeah, it is. Okay. And let me... 
in this case we would uh, Okay, line that, uh, get that sleeve all lined up. Let's see if I can hold it there for you. Bring the cutters out and everything, Bob? Yeah, I've got the cutter twisting. Okay, run it down a little bit. Yeah, if you get your if you, if you get your left hand out of the way, I can see a little bit better to uh, help you line up. And then, uh, Bob, as you're doing what you're doing, uh, how close are you to maybe thinking uh, you're going to be winch and trying to get it up? But, uh, oh, maybe about uh, three quarters of the way. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Okay. 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 We've got two revs per minute on a on a required uh, rate, John. Okay. Just looking for an estimate from you. Okay. Well, we're in position to start elevation at this time. Okay. Okay, and. Uh, Anna, just to let you know, we've uh, got the aft uh, locked in place, and uh, if you can't see it, Jim's starting to uh, rotate it up now. It's okay, now. two hours per minute. Uh, I'm just getting locked in here. Okay, we're starting her up. Okay, and uh, Jim, just to refresh you, we're going to go to 29 degrees, and then I'll cut the cables. It's looking real good. Got two Marines out there. How can it be looking real good? Okay, Robert, as soon as uh, you put the, uh, Anna, if you guys will put the seat camera on the protractor so you can see our elevation angle. Robert, you're clear to go down there when you've got uh, clearance and, uh, and do your cut. Okay. We see the protractor, Jim. Uh Roger, Mike, just to let you know, in the event that winch ops are needed to elevate the IUS uh, or for anything else, we have a teleprinter message coming up to that effect. Okay, we got the uh, winch ops are needed. You got a teleprinter message coming up.
to about five degrees go, Jim. To 45? Yep. I switched back here so I can uh, keep an eye on the protractor for you. Okay. Uh, remember that the angle Go ahead, discovery. is only good when read from the camera. Well, okay. But your call will be close. I should think. Uh, discovery, uh, your transmission is broken. Houston Discovery, uh, we got a Peter's uh, transmitter on message. We assume you're doing the drug checks. Okay, that looks like 45. I'm pretty much on a horizontal angle there, Jim. John or Anna, would you verify my 45? Okay, I'm looking on my protractor and I see uh, something less than 45. Uh, okay. Uh, almost. I'd say around 40, 42. Uh -huh. How's that look, John? Okay, hey, you're right on 45 now, so stop. Right. It's there. Beautiful. And Houston, did you copy? We have the uh, IUS at 45 degrees. Mission Control Houston. Acquisition through the tracking satellite expected momentarily. And we're some 12 minutes away from deploying the second Teeters satellite from Discovery. And uh, shortly after acquisition, we should uh, have a go for deploy. And uh, Houston Discovery, we uh, show the stage one. Stage one uh, batteries online and everything looks good. Dad, how do you? Uh, how, what do you say? Roger, Discovery. We concur. You are go for deploy. Okay. And Houston Discovery, uh, EVA crewmen are back in the airlock and the hatch is closed right now. Roger. We copy, Discovery. Discovery Houston, I am pleased to introduce the third assistant secretary. I don't hear anything. Um, that's okay. Just put. Go ahead and. Uh, Captain Coates, Mike, uh, we're very proud of you all and all the actions you've taken to make your mission successful so far. Now that you've got all the problems solved, do you think the flight will be normal? I can't well, we sure hope so. <laughs> we've had a good workout uh, today already, and uh, we hope the rest of the flight goes a little more uh, according to plan. Okay, you can go ahead and count. Uh, Colonel Blaha, John, uh, I know this has been a very busy time. Have you had any time to enjoy the view, or have you been working all the time? Plenty of time to enjoy the view. It's really been great here in zero G. It feels pretty close to one G. <laughs> okay, John. John, John. Go ahead. And Dr. Fisher, Anna, when you uh, set the computer to deploy the satellite, did you think it would really go after all the trouble you've had? <laughs> what did she say? Yeah, she, she, she said no. Okay, you can go ahead with the, with the next one. Colonel Springer and Colonel Buckley, uh, Bob and Jim, you were so obviously a team in your spacewalk this morning that I address you as a team. They tell me you would have had to bring that rocket back to Earth if you'd not been able to fix it. Houston, thank you very much. This concludes the call. Discovery Houston, Discovery Houston through Teeters. How do you read? We read you fine. Roger, Discovery. Sorry to wake you up. We see a fuel cell 2 substack volts problem. We expect it to go out of limit shortly. We have some mods to the procedure we need you to execute that we're ready to read for you when you're all woken up. 
Roger. In Discovery, we hope this will be mercifully short and should only require one crew member, and we can, we hope, preserve some remaining hours of sleep. Roger, Discovery. Uh, we see uh, Substack 2 volts going high on fuel cell 2. We expect it will break the limits within a few moments. The procedure is page 5-13 in the orbit pocket checklist for fuel cell delta volts. The changes to that procedure are we need you to break the main C to main A bus tie, and that will be done on R1, main bus tie, Charlie switch to off. Then perform the fuel cell delta volts procedure as shown in the checklist for fuel cell two. One exception to the procedure, prior to shutting down the fuel cell, please bus tie Alpha to Bravo and not Bravo to Charlie. To repeat, that's bus tie Alpha to Bravo prior to fuel cell shutdown. Over. Roger, we copy all that. Okay, Discovery, and two other points of information for you. Uh, we have declared a, we're heading towards a PLS landing opportunity down here. That's a Rev 33. We'll have plenty of words for you in the morning mail. And we are configuring via MCC command to go S-band, uplink, and downlink when we next get you on Kedris. You, may, you recall we're currently S-band up and K-band down. No action required on your part. We should be full S-band at next Tedris. Roger. Discovery Houston, we confirm the main C tie has been broken. Your go to proceed with the recommended procedures. Roger. Houston, Discovery. Go ahead, Discovery. Yes, we've completed the uh, fuel cell shutdown, the step number one, on page 5-13, and are currently working fuel cell safing. Roger, Discovery, we copy. This is mission control, two days, zero hours, 31 minutes, mission elapsed time. Flight director Ron Dittimore for the entry team polling the Flight controllers here in mission control as to their readiness for the deorbit burn. So far, no problems uh, reported. Mission control will be will be giving the uh, crew the go no go for uh, deorbit burn at approximately uh, 25 minutes, rather uh, just perhaps uh, 22 minutes uh, before the uh, before the scheduled start of the burn, which is coming up. 26 minutes, so we may be hearing the uh, go no go announcement here very shortly. Discovery Houston, uh, we've seen you reload your targets and they look good. Your go for the burn. We've got one word for you on your hydraulic repair press post burn. Go ahead. Okay, you're going to need to go to override on all the FCS channels because of these valve problems we've just had. Once you've com accomplished your SSME repress, you can go back to auto on FCF channels one and four. Okay, we'll go over right now, and after the hydraulic repress, we'll go back to auto on one and four. You agree with that, GNC? Affirmative, fine. Okay, okay, that sounds good, Mike. Houston is covering. Roger, go ahead. Okay, we had PC drop on the right engine and we started yawn to the left. The ball valve is still open. We assume we had a right engine prop fail and we stopped the burn. Here we copy. Copy, Fido. Roger, we copy that discovery. Thank you. Copy, Fido. Copy. Murray, we we discovery, Houston, we're with you through Guam uh, for about two minutes. Six foot a second more expensive than this one is because the argument appears okay. to be different. There may be some but cheaper ones and his north yeah, Okay, you're loud and clear also. We haven't looked at all the opportunities yet. I'm just trying to get a feel if you want to seriously consider this next orbit to try and get very close to steep or if you want to extend the 13 foot a second and go on to tomorrow. Kind of press forward to see what we can do this orbit. Rog, uh, you may have done this already, but you might uh, 
take a look at the, pull out the uh, mixed crossfeed cards and take a look at those while we're uh, talking about it down here. We've been looking at that procedure. Okay, sounds good. Do you like the target? Okay, he thanks you. Solution looks good, Flight. And just a couple of reminders. Uh, okay, no switch back to uh, straight yes, feed sir, during yes, this. Please. It'll be mixed cross feed all the way go through flight. the ohms until you uh, complete go for with aft RCS. I'm go flight. Fido. A prop go. fail or an engine Pinko. fail above safe go. HP is a termination. Go. Pinko. Go. Max. Here we go. Okay. okay. Or go for the burn cap. Okay, we copy that. And Discovery Houston, you are go for the burn. Got you go for the burn. And we're going to start APU 1. Roger that. Discovery on the heading alignment circle, nominal and energy. Discovery, you need to manually open landing gear ISO valve number one. Okay, we're opening one. one. Altitude approximately 21,000 feet, velocity about 700 feet per second. about 17,000 feet. Flight Dynamics Officer reports Discovery looking good. We're only rolling on to final approach. Less than 10 miles out. Touchdown in a minute and a half. Velocity about 500 feet per second. Altitude about 10,000 feet. Discovery surface wind still 24010, gusting to 15. Okay, thank you. Discovery is on center line and on glide slope. Flight dynamics officer reports. Altitude about uh, 1,000 feet. Our video that you see is from a previous shuttle mission. And it's uh, slightly out of sync with what we've got. Uh, gear down now on the uh, simulation. Show uh, weight on wheels. And weight on nose gear. Roger, Discovery. Real stop reported, uh, two days, three hours, uh, 38 minutes.
flight controllers uh, looking through the uh, post-landing switch changes now and configuring uh, shuttle systems uh, for post-landing. This is in accordance with the traditions of SMS teammates. I'd like to show our respect and our appreciation. I did a heck of a job. I'd like to present these to you. Uh, you sure do. Yeah. Good job, guys. Thanks for making us look good. That's right. <laughs>